Ladies and gentlemen, after four matches on the WrestleMania Night 1 card, CM Punk has found himself at WrestleMania. It was only a matter of time, so let's begin booking this match. So currently as of recording, it's mid-October and CM Punk's return is heavily rumored for Survivor Series and I do think that is a good place to bring him back, especially since it's in Chicago. So the night of Survivor Series after Roman Reigns defeats Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns celebrates and he leaves the ring. Um, so CM Punk has not made his debut yet. It's the end of the show. It's the end of the match. And the fans are still waiting. The pay-per-view is about to end. The screen goes black. The copyright logo shows up. And the screen is basically black ar around 5 to 10 seconds. The fans are still there. People are still watching. They're still eager to um, see if CM Punk is going to return or not. So at this point, the fans... They get upset because CM Punk has not returned, but after like around 30 seconds of a black screen, <laughs> CM Punk's theme plays. Punk, he's he's back. He's he's back at Survivor Series. He's been trolling the audience for months. He's been trolling for weeks. He's been trolling for a whole lot of time, and it's finally it finally happened. But when Punk comes out, he doesn't look too happy. He doesn't like interact with the fans or whatever. He walks down to the ring. He grabs a microphone. And, the, and his first words after nine years out of WWE is, You don't deserve me. And that's all he says. And then CM Punk walks out. And yes, he is a heel in this video, so you guys were wondering. So next week on Raw after Survivor Series, CM Punk shows up and he opens up the show. He makes his entrance looking disgusted at the audience. He sits down crisscross applesauce style with a microphone in his hand by the entrance ramp. Just like 2011. So CM Punk starts off with his return promo with, Is this on? Oh, how surprising. Just in case they decide to shut it off, I bought a few of my own. Anyways, I think you know who I am and everything that I stand for. But the only reason why I came back is to fill up my pockets. I figured coming here, they would treat me like just like they did with Jade Cargill or Cody Rhodes. But you know, I just had to talk backstage with old trips. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna be winning the undisputed WWE Championship anytime soon, or even the World Heavyweight. So uh, which you know, it would look real, real good on me. Bro. Oh, and by the way, Seth and Roman, they're dodging some pretty, pretty heavy bullets. But you know, when I first got out here, when I was backstage talking to the higher ups, if I would say, they told me not to be like CM Punk. They said to me that don't do what you did 12 years ago. See, the thing is, I'm sitting down, I have a few microphones, they all work as of right now, and we are live. I got some things to get off my chest. Everything that I said back in 2011 came true. The company is better because Vince McMahon's power to wield this company is dead. And his son-in-law, Paulie, is now running the show, unfortunately. Which, don't get me wrong, I ain't gonna forget the long talk we had backstage, but, but let me get something straight. The same people who come out of their seat cheering me is the same reason why I left this company and why I never wanted to come back. Because the same ones sipping on those cups are the same ones who buy these programs that my face isn't the cover of. And that ain't sour grapes, that's a fact of life. <laughs> yeah. But you don't have to worry because just in a matter of time, CM Punk will be the poster boy of this company. And you know, as I see all of you enjoying what WWE is today makes me sick. This is the same company that had your lord and savior Vincent Kennedy getting his noodle wet and spending millions upon millions of dollars to keep his little scandal under lockdown. This is the same company that released around 300 WWE superstars just because they can. This is also the same company who has a part-time champion. But hell, this is the same goddamn company that scams all of you for your money every single dollar that you have every goddamn week. This is the same goddamn company that ghosted CM Punk. See, I am going to keep going on and on about this cut. Uh, what? Oh. Okay, at this point, CM Punk's mic gets cut off. And he starts to realize that, oh, he has another one. Well, to be honest, which... Uh, and the, sec the second mic also gets cut off. He, he barely even got like three words in and it already got cut off. So that's kind of weird. Now CM Punk is frustrated and he storms into Gorilla and the camera follows. CM Punk gets in Triple H's face while he's wearing the headset. Triple H gets up and tells Punk, Look, 
would give you a chance and you took advantage of it. Who knows what else you could have said. We can't let you go out there and ruin our reputation like you did. I know what you can do with that microphone. Don't let me regret signing you because I've got a lot more power now than before. CM Punk yells back to Triple H saying that the reputation of this company has been ruined and established in the summer of 2011 thanks to me. And then CM Punk goes home. Um, Survivor Series all the way to Elimination Chamber. CM Punk doesn't wrestle just to build up his heel persona even more and more. Um, it could be bad for WWE, but it's just gonna keep the fans more mad and mad. So all he does from um, Survivor Series all the way up into the Elimination Chamber is just talk shit about the company, talk shit about the audience and everything. So right now we're after the Elimination Chamber. It's close to, we're over a month away from Russell Mania. Adam Pearce and CM Punk finally meet backstage on Raw after the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Adam Pearce is mad at CM Punk because he signed him on Raw and then he hasn't really let wrestle. It's been almost four months and the man has not wrestled. So now Adam Pearce tells CM Punk that this is a wrestling company now. It's literally in the name. CM Punk cuts off Adam Pearce and he tells Adam that See, the last time I checked, this was a sports entertainment company. A company that entertains. So I'll tell you what, if you can find someone who can even dare step in the ring with me, fine. I'll face whoever the hell you can find. So then the next week, CM Punk goes to Adam Pearce and asks him if he found someone. Now Adam Pearce says no um so he hasn't found an opponent for cm punk but pierce says to punk that everyone that i've asked turned down the offer because they don't want to ever be in the same locker room hell they don't even want to be in the same ring as you so cm punk gets frustrated and then he goes to the ring to cut a promo he starts off by saying so this is how we're gonna play huh no one's gonna have the balls to face cm punk what do you think i am a disgrace to the locker room a fucking cancer at this point i should be familiar with people calling me all that stuff because i still haven't ran into the likes of seth rollins the world heavyweight champion see it could be a shame to make seth rollins versus gunther a triple threat match for the world heavyweight championship now cm punk smiles he has a great idea in his head calls out seth rollins as an answer Keeps doing it again and again, and we actually see Seth Rollins. We actually see Seth Rollins confront CM Punk. Both Punk and Rollins go face to face. Now CM Punk tells Seth that, "Don't get me wrong, I ain't here to say I'm sorry, but I'm here to take that world title away from you." And you, you know, Seth, I have a proposal for you. Seth Rollins, Gunther, CM Punk, Triple Threat at Mania. How does that sound, buddy? Now Seth finally talks and he says that Well if that ain't sour grapes I don't know what is First of all you come on my show Run your mouth for 4 months And now you got the nerve to demand a title shot from me Who the hell do you think you're talking to And now at this point Triple H is summoned from Gorilla And he makes his way to the ring Tell Seth Rollins to leave the ring And go off backstage Now with CM Punk and Triple H the only ones in the ring Triple H starts by saying that Look see I know we don't really get along a lot But for the sake of this business, for the sake of this industry, I've got an offer for you. See, I know WrestleMania is slowly, slowly approaching and that you don't really have a match to tell you what. At WrestleMania, it's going to be CM Punk versus an opponent of my choosing at WrestleMania. When CM Punk finds out this information, he is he knows exactly what Triple H is doing. He puts two and two together and then he says to Triple H that, oh, okay, okay, so you're doing the same thing that you did to Seth Rollins on me. All right. So if that's the case, I know exactly who my opponent is. And he's certainly not anywhere behind that locker room. So you know what? I accept. Triple H and CM Punk, they both shake hands and then they walk away. The next week on Raw, CM Punk is not there. Obviously, you know, he's not going to be on every show or whatever. But the next week after that, he's back. He's back in the ring and he starts out by saying, So apparently Mr. Ravesque has made the match official. CM Punk versus a man that's not ready to face CM Punk. CM Punk versus an irrelevant nobody. I think whoever will meet me on the other side of that ring has no idea who's waiting for him at the other side. Because let me tell you what, CM Punk is ready to... Uh, and now CM Punk gets interrupted by Adam Pearce. Adam Pearce now tells CM Punk that, says that this match against a mystery opponent is not a singles match. It's not a normal match. But it has a very unique stipulation to it. Adam Pearce doesn't specify what stipulation that is. But we're gonna find out. 
at WrestleMania. Now the next week CM Punk is actually forced to cut a promo backstage hyping up his match at WrestleMania. So Punk says whoever is going to be my opponent at WrestleMania seems to have some pretty big balls. See I know exactly who he is and it takes some pretty big balls for him to request a special match type. So let me name a few names. Could it be Mr. Hustle, Loyalty, Respect? Probably not. Could it be The Miz? Hell, I would definitely mark out if it was Shane McMahon or HBK. Like, like, would that be funny? See, the thing is, CM Punk is a man who don't give a shit. I never did an AEW. I never did an ECW. I never did anywhere. Everything I did wasn't to entertain the masses. I did it to get my money and exposure up because that's all that matters to someone like me. As I said when I came back, the same people who cheer me is the same reason why I left and I wouldn't be afraid to do it again. At WrestleMania, I'm gonna slaughter whoever it is. And then Punk drops the mic and leaves. It's WrestleMania Night 1, the 6th match on the card. Cult of personality hits and everyone is waiting. Triple H comes out and he says that the stipulation of this match will be a dog collar match. CM Punk is starstruck. While he's starstruck, MJF's music is playing. Maxwell Jacob Friedman is in WWE. The crowd can't believe it. The hottest free agent in pro wrestling has been signed by WWE. And now CM Punk can't believe it. MJF does his big entrance debuting as a babyface. Really taken in the moment also while daring a hold down CM Punk. Both wrestlers put on the dog collar and the match is started. They both stare at each other. CM Punk says to MJF, you have no business being here. And then MJF says, neither do you. And then throws the first punch in. Here we go. Both men all over the ring and out pulling each other, bashing each other in their head. It's a bloody... Bloody encounter between both men. Both men are battered, bashed up. They've thrown all the punishment they can to each other. MJF gets mostly chewed in this match because he's the guy returning. He does all the big moves against CM Punk. Later in the match, MJF uses his ring on his finger to knock out CM Punk cold on the canvas and then pins him. MJF wins, he gets the 1 2 3. MJF finally got revenge on CM Punk in a dog collar match, which he lost um, at AW Revolution 2022. MJF now celebrates with the crowd and he's now a part of WWE on the Raw brand. So, after this video, we still have three more videos for night one and we move on to night two. So, next video is gonna be a big, beefy video the War Games match. I'm very excited to do that video. I'll see you guys in that video. Please leave a like, subscribe. Peace out.